Hello friends, today we shall going to discuss with the first floor the main important introductory aspects of the first important chapter in the biology in the biology. The first unit in the biology is reproduction. It mainly comprises of four important chapters. The first chapter is reproduction in organisms. Second chapter is sexual reproduction in flowering plants. The third important chapter is called human reproduction. And the last important chapter is sexual reproduction. Last important chapter is reproductive health. Are the four important chapters normally comes under reproduction. Today we shall going to discuss with reference to the main important introductory aspects of the first important chapter. The name of the chapter is reproduction in organisms. Each and every living organism can live only for a certain period of time on the earth's surface. The process of continuity of living organisms is only through reproduction, is only through reproduction. With the exhibition of reproduction, thus continuity of the life form will play a very important role. In addition to this, it will play a very important role in the origin of new life forms on the earth's surface. For the continuity of life forms on the earth's surface, we need the essentiality of a fundamental property of the living organism called reproduction. In a valid terminology, the reproduction is defined as it is the ability of the living organism to produce the new progeny of its own time. It is the ability of the living organism to produce the new progeny of its own type is purely designated as reproduction. During the course of uh, survival, each and every living organism has to exhibit a uh, property. The name of the property is said to be the lifespan. The period from the period from birth to death. The period from birth to death is purely designated as lifespan. Is purely designated as lifespan. The period from birth to natural death of an organism is called lifespan. The lifespan may vary from one organism to another organism. It mainly vary from one day to 4,000 years. Yes, there is no relationship between the size of the organism and the lifespan of the living organism. If we consider a couple of examples with reference to the lifespan, the size of the crow and a parrot is almost the same, but the lifespan in case of crow is only 15 years, but in case of parrot, it takes its more than 150 years. In case of plants, in case of mango tree, the lifespan is 200 years. And in case of paper tree, it may exceed more than 2000 to 2500 years. 2000 to 2500 years. No individual organism on the earth's surface is immortal. In a Greek terminology, immortal is defined as life forever. Life forever, no death. No, no individual organism is immortal except in case of single-celled organisms. In case of single-celled organisms, with the exhibition of cell division, there is no natural death. There is no natural death. Naturally, you can find the presence of immortal status in case of amoeba and in case of bacteria.
bacteria amoeba and in case of bacteria with the exhibition of cell division there is no natural death with reference to lifespan with reference to lifespan the lifespan of the living organism is highly variable in nature in case of may fly it can live for a period of only 24 hours or one day in case of fruit fly popularly called central of genetics called drosophila melanogaster it exceeds more than 20 to uh, 30 days in case of crow it is 15 years in case of tortoise it is 100 to 150 years in case of human beings it is 60 to 80 years if we consider the banyan tree the uh, lifespan is more than 700 years one of the nearest relative of human beings in case um, human being is said to be the monkey it can survive for, for a period of 25 years in case of elephants the average lifespan is 65 years in case of eagles it is up to 90 years and in addition to this the butterfly can live for a period of one to two weeks whereas the banyan tree will survive for a period of only two to three years in a valid terminology the reproduction is said to be the fundamental characteristic feature of the living organism it involves the transmission of genetic material from one generation to the next generation through the transmission of genetic characters it will play a very important role in inheritance in addition to this with the exhibition of genetic recombination you can find the presence of variations in the living organisms as a result of variations in the living organisms you can find the origin of new life forms on the surface during the course of during the course of lifespan in a valid terminology the reproduction is defined as it is a biological process in which an organism give rise to young ones of its own kind young ones of its own kind is purely designated as reproduction with reference to the main important fundamental functions of the reproduction it replaces the individuals brain due to natural senescence or aging natural senescence or aging it also play a very important role in removal of population due to predation or disease are replaced through reproduction through the natural means of predation it will uh, play a very important role in the sudden decline in the prey population through reproduction it will play a very important role in replacing the damaged disease or injured uh, organisms it will also play a very important role in exhibition of variations in the living organisms in addition to this it shows better adaptability status and also it will play a very important role in the struggle for the existence struggle for the existence with reference to the basic features of the reproduction in order to exhibit the phenomenon of replication we need the essentiality of reproduction in a valid terminology the replication is defined as the process of formation of two daughter dna the process of formation of two daughter dna from the single parent dna from the single parent dna is called replication these are the two daughter daughter dna form through dna replication in addition to this in order to induce cell division 
we need the essentiality of reproduction in case of living organisms you can find the presence of two types of cell divisions namely mitosis and second one is meiosis naturally you can find the presence of mitotic type of cell divisions in the <coughs> somatic or in the vegetative cell in order to exhibit growth and differentiation in the living organisms, we need the essentiality of mitosis. In a valid terminology, the mitosis is defined as from the single diploid parent cell with the exhibition of equational division. With the exhibition of equational division led to the formation of two diploid daughter cells led to the formation of two diploid daughter cells. In order to exhibit growth and differentiation in case of living organisms, we need the essentiality of mitosis. In addition to this, especially in the lower forms, the mitosis is said to be the one of the means of reproduction. Is one of the means of reproduction. If we consider the second type of cell division, the second type of cell division is called meiosis. It naturally occurs in the reproductive or in the germinal cells. With the exhibition of reductional division, with the exhibition of reductional division, the original chromosome number is reduced to R. Basically, the meiosis is divided into meiosis 1. The meiosis 1 is purely reduction and division. The meiosis 2 is said to be the equational division as a result of equational division. During the course of meiosis 2, led to the formation of four haploid daughter cells. Led to the formation of for haploid daughter cells are formed through the meiosis. In order to exhibit uh, uh, basic fundamental uh, types of cell division, we need the essentiality of reproduction. In addition to this, in order to exhibit growth, in addition to this, for the formation of protoplasm, we need the essentiality of reproduction. With reference to protoplasm, the protoplasm is purely designated as the physical and it is said to be the living component of the cell. In order to maintain all the fundamental activities in the living organisms, we need the essentiality of protoplasm. And also for the formation of reproductive units, we need the essentiality of reproduction and also for the elaboration and for the development of reproductive unit to form new young individuals, new offspring, we need the essentiality of reproduction. This is with reference to the many important basic features of reproduction. Basic features of reproduction. In case of living organisms, you can find the presence of two types of reproduction, namely asexual reproduction and the second one is said to be the sexual reproduction. The first type of reproduction is said to be the asexual reproduction. It is a type of reproduction in which offspring are formed from a single parent cell without the involvement or without the formation and fusion of gametes. Such a type of reproduction is said to be the asexual reproduction. This asexual type of reproduction is popularly designated as, is also designated as a gamogenesis. In case of asexual reproduction, it is generally achieved by the process of mitosis. So the offspring produced through the asexual reproduction are morphologically and genetically similar to one another. 
such a type of organisms are popularly designated as clones are popularly designated as clones it is also designated as ramets it is also designated as the individuals that are morphologically and genetically similar to the parent <coughs> are called clones are called clones it occurs in both single celled organisms and also in the multi celled individuals it is said to be the one of the common methodology of reproduction seen in case of algae fungi bryophytes tetrapods sponges amoeba paramecium euglena and also in the hydra with reference to the main important Similar features of the asexual reproduction. The asexual reproduction is resulted without the formation and fusion of gametes. However, the asexual reproduction are purely uniparental in origin. It is purely uniparental in origin. Only the somatic cells are involved. Only the somatic cells are involved. It involves the production of asexual spores. It involves the production of in addition to this, the offspring produced through asexual reproduction are genetically identical to the parents they are genetically they are genetically identical to the parents not only with reference to genetical identity even the morphological characteristic features they remain same opposite sexes are not involved in case of asexual reproduction acanthella it is purely uniparental in origin the rate of reproduction is fast and it is very quick the rate of reproduction is very fast and it is very quick with the exhibition of some of the important types of reprodu asexual reproduction namely binary fusion budding and multiple fusion you can expect random multiplication of the living organisms within a within a short duration yes the rate of reproduction in case of asexual reproduction is fast and quick 